Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And you can share with a friend if you enjoy it and subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This week on Today's Homeowner, we're helping a family solve some problems with a home they love as we revisit the four seasons of home ownership summer list. It's probably not running. That's not good. Jeff and Stephanie Jones share this home with their daughters, Hannah and Addison, and to hear them tell it, it was love at first sight. Well, honestly, this was the first house we looked at and the only house we looked at. Just fell in love with it. It just fit our family perfectly. So we're walking Jeff and Stephanie through our four seasons of home ownership, which includes a list for each season of the year to guide homeowners to the specific chores that need to be accomplished during that time. You know, we've been married for 16 years, and a lot of that time I was traveling on the road. I used to play in a band for a living. It's a band called Big Daddy Weed. But at the same time, I had a, an online business where I make personalized and custom printed drumsticks. So eventually, I left the band. I was able to focus on just the business. The great thing about this house is it's got an office above the garage, and I'm like in my own little land up there. I love it. Oh, man, this is great. I love getting to work from home, you know, working in my office. I love the, the setup, the arrangement. Sure. But the problem is the air conditioning just never keeps up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when summer gets here, sometimes I'll put the AC on maybe 74. Uh -huh. And it never quite gets down to 74. It'll be 77, 78 Ouch. for the whole day. And of course, I'm dying over there. I'll tell you what, I've got an air conditioned heating specialist that can figure this kind of thing out. Okay, that's great. Okay, what about the sound here? I guess those drums kind of resonate pretty strongly downstairs. Yes, Danny, it gets very loud. I make drumsticks. Of course, playing the drums in my former career, I still you know, get to do that back and forth. And I like the fact that both of our children are musical. And the bad part is I'm concerned about my neighbors. It'd be great to have something that would help tame the sound. Another thing I wanted to show you, Danny, was our pergola. Well, this is kind of nice under here with all the vines all over. Wow. It is, but when we first bought the house, I was drawn to our pergola outside. It was just a gorgeous area. We would spend a lot more time out here, but I get worried with the girls. Um, all of the boards are oh. kind of rotting and <laughs> going in and underneath. We wow. don't know what's under here. Now, there is a little problem here and there, and boy, it's slick, too. We definitely would replace the boards that have gone bad and maybe really kind of look and figure out what's causing it to, to be isolated here and there. Well, not to mention the surprise that comes with it. I uh -oh. think, what, about a couple weeks ago, she was out here cleaning, and I heard this scream, and uh, a possum just took off right down wow. there. You're and, messing uh, with a possum nest. I yes. thought it was the cat at first, but it was not a cat. And it's actually getting under the... Getting under uh, the pergola and just took off down the trail and went out this hole in the fence. Wow. Um, just so, enough room under there, huh? Well, we'll figure out a way to close that off. Okay. Hopefully when he or she is not in there. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and then, uh, and then of course, tightening up the fence, and um, I know that's on on the list to check the fencing, check the gates, and uh, we'll tighten all of that up. That won't be any problem at all. That would be awesome. Okay. In addition to the deck and fence maintenance, there's also some stucco to be repaired on the front porch. But our first priority is solving the problem with the air conditioning in Jeff's office. So my friend Steve Davies drops by to check out the existing system and make some recommendations. You've got a really small area that uh, this central system is trying to cover, and it's it's probably not running long enough to pull the moisture out properly. That's not good. That's not good. My recommendation would be to replace the central system with a ductless system. It gives us the ability to run at a smaller capacity because it has a variable speed compressor and variable blower that addresses not only the sensible cooling, but the moisture removal within that area. While Steve's crew gets busy replacing the heat pump for Jeff's office, let's check out Joe's simple solution for this week. One of the very best ways to store hand tools is in a drawer. Not only are they protected from dust and dirt, but they're well organized, so if you need a tool, you can find it quickly. There is one problem, though. If you just toss the tools directly into the drawer, they have a tendency to roll around and bang into each other. 
So here's the solution. First, remove all the tools and then get a piece of carpeting. This is a carpet tile. You can use a scrap or a sample and use a utility knife or a pair of scissors to cut it to fit the inside of the drawer. But before putting it in the drawer, get some spray lubricant and put a light coating onto the carpet itself. You don't need much, that's all. And put the rug in there, just like that, fits nice and tightly side to side. And then you can put in your tools. What you'll find is, not only will the tools not roll around quite as much, but they won't bang into each other, which is important if they're sharpened tools like chisels. And because you sprayed it, you don't have to worry about rust. We're using our Four Seasons of Home Ownership Summer Checklist to help Jeff and Stephanie survey their home. The first two items on the list are changing AC filters and flushing the AC drain line. Those items are under control here, but we've discovered that the unit for Jeff's office over the garage needs to be replaced. The HVAC guys must first remove the old inefficient system before beginning the installation of a new carrier ductless system. Now while they're busy putting all of that together, Chelsea and I decide to tackle the stucco repair on the front porch. Is this foam under here? Yeah, actually um, this is a synthetic stucco and then this is just a coating that we put on it. It's it, uh, really pretty good job on it, but um, it's obvious what happened with this. Yeah. It's the kids. I'm sure it's the kids. We thought it was a great idea to have this small swing, but of course the girls decided to turn it into an amusement park ride. We've got Sweet, this. Just tie it back to that railing right there. All right, well, let's see what, what happens here. I sure would like to sit down. I this. know, me too. I'm yeah, gonna I don't sit think down. we did this right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't know if that bungee's gonna hold you and the swing. I don't think the bungee was designed for this kind of tension. You just spread it like drywall compound, I guess? Mm hmm. Just apply it with a putty knife and a little bit of finessing to make it match. So it has like texture in it. Mm hmm. We can shape it and mold it. That looks really good. Golly. I think that, you know, doing the sponge, like you said. Uh -huh. You won't have the, the marks. There's really no way to keep the swing from hitting the stucco, but we can minimize the effect of it by adding this piece of weather stripping. We're about to do some much needed deck maintenance, which is number three on our top 10 list. All right, well, we got to get all the everything off of here, of course, and uh, then we're going to set this right over there because you got some cleaning to do on that <laughs> thing there, <laughs> part of the little. list. But be careful, though, because I, I stepped through right over there. Oh, no. And also, uh, if you see the possum, Grab him by the tail, okay? And just hold him out like that and then run through him over that fence, okay? But that sounds like something that he would make up. You're serious about the possum? Yes, there's a possum under there. I'm gonna need my hair up for this then. Okay. So Jeff, um, I don't know my plants very well. What, uh, what do we have here? That's a special um, weed. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I think that if you leave a pot alone and something grows out of it, that's a good thing, right? But uh, wow. it's taken it, on it life like of its, its own. It's like a tomato plant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah we well, can call it that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to disturb it, I guess. But that's not the only unique plant life here. Oh my gosh, that vine was desperate to get up. I don't think there's. I don't Is think it going there's down anything. Or coming up. Well, it's coming up from the bottom. I don't think there's anything you can do. You don't want to cut it or damage it. Right. Because all of that'll die. So that I don't think. Crazy. I don't think there's anything you can do with that. As we start removing the deck boards, it's obvious the damage is a little more extensive than we thought. You know, it's fairly obvious why there's so much rot on this part of the deck. I mean, it's just falling apart. Even though this was treated wood, the problem is all of this water come pouring down here all the time. And even with the best treated wood, you're going to have problems like this. Now, we're going to do a couple things to make sure this doesn't happen again. One, we're going to remove as much dirt as we can that's around some of the pieces of wood because it shouldn't be touching the ground. Then we're going to use ground contact type of treated wood so that this won't happen again. And and to make sure, I've got an idea of a fairly creative piece of metal guttering along here that'll look okay, but will keep the water from hitting on this every time it rains. Since we've completely stripped the deck, we'll need more materials than we had originally planned, so I'm checking on the progress of the new AC system. The equipment for these ductless systems has a much smaller footprint, both inside and outside of the home, but Steve tells me there's a much bigger advantage. The nice thing about the ductless system is most of them are about a 20 or 22 seer unit, which is almost twice as efficient wow. as the standard yeah. central system that's installed today. Yeah, 
So even when they're working, they're working a lot, a lot cheaper than one of the regular traditional units. A lot more efficiently. Yeah. Number six on our top 10 list for summer is inspecting fences and gates for damage. So Chelsea and Stephanie are about to take on that challenge. Well, we have some screws that we'll use and we'll use our hammer to, if there's still nails in there to okay. tack it back in place. We're using exterior coated screws instead of the nails that they were previously installed with because the nails aren't holding them in place anymore. All right, looks like we uh, kind of ran the possum off here and they're closing <laughs> off his uh, uh, highway over there. So he's going to be real confused tonight, isn't he? Yeah, we're going to be safe now. <laughs> okay, so instead of taking all of these pieces out, because really, you know, a lot of this wood is good, except for just a little bit here, we'll just um, put these right beside them. Some people call it sistering. All right, I'm going to give you the screw gun. Okay. I'll hold the screw cup. This should be interesting. And I'll hold it in place for you. I've you got a screw? I've never okay. done this before. The impact driver was a lot of fun. Now I feel confident that I can just go out there and use it and fix the fence myself. Awesome. Looks great. Now, have you ever just thrown open a bedroom door and the doorknob goes right into the drywall behind it? Well, I have done that. Sadly to admit, and you know, repairing drywall, there are several different techniques, but I have to say, this kit by Ryobi really does kind of take a lot of the guesswork out of it. First of all, there's everything that you need to repair that hole. So I've opened one up to show you. What you want to do is cover the hole with this template. It's got a little adhesive back. You pop this in place. Next, what you've got is this drive plate with your pilot hole bit. Now, what you want to do is you want to take the hole saw and slide that right on there. It just kind of locks into place and holds it in place as you're drilling this hole saw into the drywall. Now this hole saw is gonna stay in the drywall because once it becomes flush with the surface of the wall, you take your drive plate out. Now you're ready to cover this up with sheetrock mud. What makes this different? Well, the next time you go to throw open that door, the doorknob is gonna strike this hard plate as opposed to a mesh patch or drywall tape. So that means this is gonna hold up over time. Jeff and Stephanie are walking through our four seasons of home ownership list for summer. Chelsea and Stephanie are about to handle numbers five and six on the top 10 list, cleaning the outdoor grill and cleaning the outdoor furniture. All right, Stephanie, I have a way for us to expedite cleaning of your patio furniture and your grill and get it ready for summer. Okay. The pressure washer. But this one is electric, so nice. we don't need gasoline, and it's going to be a lot more quiet. My favorite part is that you don't have to crank it. You just turn the knob to turn it on. Oh. So let's get our safety glasses. Okay. You have yours, right? Where do they go? This unit allows you to adjust pressure settings and apply soap with one-handed operation at the nozzle so we can move from delicate items like the grill and patio chairs to cleaning the post on the pergola. No, we got some green right here. You want to get that there and there? Gosh, nothing's ever good enough for you, no, Stephanie. I know. So this is when you turn the pressure washer back over to the homeowner. The next item on our list is having the fireplace professionally inspected. Now that may seem out of place in the summer, but you'll be ahead of the curve in the fall and you won't have any trouble at all lining up someone to do it. Number eight is scraping loose paint outside and repainting those areas. Jeff and Stephanie assure us they can handle number nine and 10, cleaning windows and mulching planting beds. In addition to the must-do items, there are also some optional lists with chores like cleaning bathroom exhaust fans to keep them running efficiently, sealing asphalt driveways to ensure their longevity, and inspecting your portable or standby generator to make sure you have electricity when the power goes out. This model features a steel enclosure with gull wing doors that make inspection and maintenance a snap, not to mention protecting the unit from the weather and absorbing the sound of the engine. Now, speaking of absorbing sound. One thing that I'm concerned with is when I play the drums, you know, my neighbors, do you think this is gonna help with the insulation from sound? I'm sure that your neighbors will be happy. <laughs> that you have this in there. Okay. Boy, it does resonate through there. I can really hear it all the all the does, bass drum, especially. Yeah. Uh, hope you have some good neighbors. We have great neighbors. They don't complain very much, but we just want to be respectful uh -huh. of the noise level are whenever they he's playing. Are they music lovers? They might be. <laughs> I hope well, so. That, that would be good. Well, I'll tell you what, I have this decibel meter that I uh, bought years ago, and I thought it'd be cool for us just to see. Wow. Okay, it's up to 74. Mm -hmm. So we'll just see after we put the mineral wool insulation on those walls. It's gonna help on the insulation okay. quality, we know that, but we'll see how much of the sound deadening qualities will kind of help 
Make the neighbors a little happier. That would be great. Mineral or stone wool insulation is more dense than fiberglass, so it blocks the transfer of sound better, but at the same time, it also stops the transfer of heat. Now that's great for Jeff, but there are also some other properties that make it a good solution for all homeowners. It's made from natural rock, so it's already fire resistant, water resistant. This is naturally resistant to mold and bacterial growth, which is huge. How are you guys doing in here? Doing good. You see, you see how it presses in around it so much better? Oh yeah. And I mean, it just it creates more of a seal than the fiberglass does, so it should should make a big difference to keep the neighbors happy out oh, there. Oh, yeah. And it's going to help that air conditioning system a lot. Oh, man. I can't wait. And it looks wow. like the middle 60s, yeah. so uh, 10 decibels, uh, that's a fair amount. That is awesome. Okay, well, we got to keep the neighbors happy. Yes. Now it's finally time to wrap up the pergola project. To protect the new deck boards from the constant flow of water coming off of the roof, I've had a piece of custom metal bent by a fabricator to act as a gutter between the roof and the pergola. But we have a little vine trimming to do before we can install it. Jeff, have you ever been up here before? Oh, uh, a long time ago. Man. The vines on top of the pergola are just beautiful and provide a lot of shade, but I'm sure they had no idea how many vines were on top of the roof. Have you ever trimmed these before, Jeff? Just once. Mm -hmm. I probably should have done it twice. Five or, <laughs> five or six years ago, I assume. <laughs> it's been a while. You know, we really didn't want to repair all of this damage on the deck without taking care of what caused it. After lots of chopping and lopping, we finally have a pathway for our custom gutter. But squeezing it into place is a bit of a trick because the trough is exactly the width of the space between the roof and the pergola can you squeeze the back? Yep, there we go. All right. All right, I'm going to put some pressure on it. Uh, okay, I got, there we go. All right, okay, it just, I got this one almost hooked. Can you keep doing it? Okay, we got, it's almost all, all the way up. This is good heavy duty metal, too. Okay, I can, I can go ahead and screw everything now. Man, that's a, that's a great fit. <laughs> it, it was like a, it was like a piece of a puzzle. It was perfect. We simply work our way across the pergola one 10-foot section at a time. That's how it's done. You know, I'm pretty proud of this little custom gutter that we put together here because it's solving the problem that caused all of the water damage. Because when the water runs down the roof, it'll hit the gutter, deflect down in, and it'll move it safely out to where we'll have a little splash block down there, and it won't even hit the deck. This is going to work out great. The last chore remaining is the addition of some skirting around the bottom of the deck to keep out Jeff's unwanted nocturnal guest. All right, there you go. So we've got the possum guard in place. <laughs> we've got all the rotten wood taken care of. The gutter works great. Um, what do you think so far? Unbelievable. And now you can use it, right? Yes. Because before, <laughs> that wood was so slick, and I know you pressure washed it from time to time, but it's going to be a lot better. Yeah, I was afraid to sit down, but I'm yeah. great now. <laughs> Jeff and Stephanie have a great house, but like most of our homes, it had a few issues. By using our four seasons of homeownership list as a guide, we were able to help them address the problems one by one. The right product and some simple application fixed the chip stucco while a pergola deck required a lot of labor, a stack of deck boards, and a little ingenuity to fix the damage and prevent more in the future. Correcting the uncomfortable energy hogging office AC called for some expert professional help, but Jeff did his research and selected the right insulation to make the most of that investment. I was blown away when I walked upstairs and I opened the door to my office and it was like, it was cool, the air conditioning was amazing, consistent, and I haven't felt that in the three years that we've been here. I've walked by the fence, I see nails and I think, Jeff needs to fix it, but I know that I can do it now. The pergola looks amazing. I was so excited to walk out and just, it was, I want to go sit out there now and sit and swing. I don't know if I'll come inside. It's just amazing. You can actually enjoy it. We can. We really enjoy bringing you these four seasons of home ownership episodes. This one being our summer edition. It's been very popular over the years to share with homeowners things they need to do around their home at certain times of the year. And I think we were able to show Jeff and Stephanie a number of things about their house they didn't even know about. Now that they've got all of their maintenance list done, 
can give Jeff a little more time on the drums. Hey, I'm Danny Lifford. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next week right here on Today's Homeowner. And I thought you guys needed some Today's hey, Homeowner. Come on, are you serious? All right. That's about all I got. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.